Welcome to the Financial Coaches Podcast, where we talk about how to build your practice from startup to scale up while being the kind of coach your clients crave. Finally, a podcast for financial coaches. Here are your hosts, Maria Casillas and Cody Sizemore. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Financial Coaches Podcast. I'm your co-host, Maria Casillas, and I'm joined here by Cody Sizemore. Cody, how are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? That's I'm doing pretty well, thank you. I actually, you know, it's pretty quiet in my house right now, for now, and <laughs> Yes, but that's what I want to talk with you today about because we guys, we're going to get a little personal. I know we tend to do this every few episodes, um, but we want to make sure that you know whatever is going on behind the scenes is for real for us too. So uh, we're, I want to talk to you today a little bit, Cody, about the, the reality of kids. I have four of them. Mm-hmm. Two, two of them are kind of grown. One of them is in college, so she's not really around here very often. And then the other one is in high school, the second one. Um, but I have two younger ones, and seeing as I technically homeschool the the third one, and the other one's not quite in school yet, it can be kind of frustrating here. And so I wanted to ask you if you have that problem as well. I mean, I'm sure our listeners every once in a while hear something in the background and I try really hard. For those of you who like see us on YouTube, you might see me kind of, you know, hit mute and and turn around like, I can't talk right now. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if you run into that as well at all. Yep. Um, Yeah. So I have two kids of my own. I have an eight-year-old and a one-year-old. Um, And, you know, the eight-year-old does better. Uh Uh, I had to do some training with her to get her to a a good place. But the one-year-old is one-year-old, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And he just does whatever he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes it works out, but other times it doesn't. In fact, I had something happen recently where it didn't. But maybe, maybe we'll get into that in a little bit here. But... Yeah, I I totally understand what you're saying that, you know, especially with us working from home, you know, I think that most uh, financial coaches, you know, I think the majority of them probably work from home and they do it from Zoom, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, unless you have like an office or you work out of coffee shops, but I think the majority of people work from home. Uh, Yeah. So that can be a, a little bit of a challenge sometimes, especially if you have younger kids. Right. And I seem to remember somebody in our group actually asking about whether or not people tend to go to an office space. I think he was asking about the opportunity and the cost that came with that. You know, is it worth it to pay a monthly fee, like a rental fee in order to have your own space? And the idea of kids kind of came up in that conversation because they can be a distraction for us. And also, if you're just starting out, it might not be worth it to go and actually, um, you know, rent out a space. I know one of the middle ground things that I have tried in the past is to find a sitter for a certain time of the week or time of any given day and have that sitter watch the kids for just that block of time. And then I would block some of these kinds of things where I can't have the distractions, either we're recording for the podcast or I'm, you know, having sessions set up and I would make sure that they're being watched during those times. However, when I'm doing that, I'm kind of at the mercy of sitters. And so if I have somebody who's like, you know what, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to put them into somewhere that's like a uh, a consistent sitting place because I don't want something that's five days a week. So if I don't have somebody like right now who is willing to just watch them for a couple days out of the week, I'm kind of stuck and I have to figure out how to work around that. And so um, I'd love to hear what is it that happened to, was it the one-year-old something happened to recently? Tell me yeah. about that. And did it happen like when you were with a client? Uh, you know, did it happen while you were doing just, I'm, I'm curious to know the the parameters of that. So it happened um, the last time that we recorded our, oh, no. uh, our podcast. Okay. Um, we had recorded the podcast, got done. And then I think I had like a half hour break or something. And then I had a um, sales call uh, Mm -hmm. booked for 5 p.m. at uh, my time. Okay. And um, I was just getting into it. You know, I was in like the first like 15 minutes of this phone call. And then all of a sudden I hear from across the house, uh, 
my son just like screaming, which, you know, he does that every now and then. So I'm like, okay, something's going on. Uh, but then I hear pause. I'm curious, is somebody watching him? Are you in charge of watching him or, okay. So, okay. No, no, my, my, my wife was, uh, off of work at that time. Okay. Okay. Um, so she, she was watching him. She was actually in the kitchen, um, making him some food. Okay. And, uh, yeah, so I heard some screaming and then all of a sudden, you know, I kind of was like, okay, something's going on. You probably not a big deal. He probably is just upset that he doesn't have, you know, a TV remote to mess with. (laughs) Um, and, uh, and then I heard my wife scream my name Uh twice, like, and twice, like very quickly. Mm. And I, and that never happens. Um, especially if I, if she knows that I'm working, like she does not bother me at all. She respects that. So I was like, what the heck's happening? So I like, I didn't even say, Hey, hold on to the sales call. (laughs) I just Mm -hmm. ripped my AirPods out and just like ran out uh, to the kitchen. And uh, I ran out to my wife holding my son in her arms, covered in blood. Oh, no. Yep. Um, He had, he was running around and um, he tripped over a cat bed and went full force into the corner of a wall and literally split his head open on his forehead. Like mm. huge, deep, open gash, um, and the head wounds. Oh my gosh, they bleed so much. So I can there was only blood. Imagine there was blood everywhere, like all oh. over his body, um, oh. all over you know my wife's like arm and chest, all over the floor. And immediately, I was like, "Let's go to the hospital right now!" Right. So, mm-hmm. um, long story short, he's fine. Uh, well, no good. sort of like head injury aside from the the wound uh but no like you know longer lasting head injury or anything like that he had to have four stitches um Mm -hmm. he's since got the stitches out um and you know he's back to running around full speed and you know causing trouble uh now he now he just looks like harry potter So is yes, your sales- I, I do have some things that come up every now and yeah, then. Yeah, no kidding. So I'm just curious, is your sales prospect still on hold? <laughs> like, are they still waiting for you? Uh, no, I, no, I'm teasing, uh, obviously. Did you go back and tell them? <laughs> yeah, I, I basically hung up on them. And I, <laughs> oh, no. I rescheduled them. I hit them up. I told them what happened. Uh, they, of course, were super understanding. We yeah. rescheduled. And then now they're a client. I don't know if they're a client because they felt bad for me or not. <laughs> Uh, like, you gotta help him pay that bill. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sure not. They're a client because you can do incredible things for them and with them. (laughs) So, (laughs) uh, but that's actually a a really good story, especially because it interrupted something that you were doing with a client, or at least in this case, a potential client. Uh, I know that sometimes it can be very frustrating because we've got, you know, at least for myself, I, if I'm in a, a creative mode and that gets interrupted, it is so difficult for me to go back into that creative mode. And so for me, that's where I get frustrated sometimes with the kids. It's like, look, I asked for this amount of time and I don't have a spouse. I do have a spouse, but I don't have a spouse who's home during the day. And so I don't have that backup. So it's like, if they decide they need something and the 10 year old isn't, uh, sufficiently taking care of the four-year-old, then the four-year-old comes and she'll knock on the door and she'll, you know, she doesn't, even though I'll say no, she's so insistent that she'll just keep going and going and going. So anyway, when that creative time is interrupted, that becomes frustrating, but it's not, it's not embarrassing. It seems to be a little bit more embarrassing sometimes when it's happening in the moments with clients or like when we're recording or whatever. Um, And so I want to just give grace to if you're listening today and you have this going on for you, know that it seems embarrassing in the moment, but just like Cody was able to share with us, our clients and potential clients, they usually have a lot of grace and understanding for us. And so they're not going to hold that against you, which I think is super important for us to recognize. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do. Especially if they have kids of their own, you know, like they, they totally get it. Um, Now, of course, like there is that balance of like, you know, having the clients be understanding and, you know, when stuff does happen, um, but there's also that other side of the things to where it's like, 
just because your clients can be understanding, that's not, you know, uh, I guess like an out for you to just deal with the constant interruptions, right? Absolutely. It's um, not a green light for us to be unprofessional. Correct. So, mm-hmm. you know, there has to be certain things in place, uh, you know, uh, different understandings between like your spouse, uh, with your kids, especially your older kids. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, maybe you have an older kid that can help with the younger ones kind of thing. Uh, if you have a babysitter, you know, having those understandings as well, just essentially setting boundaries with Mm -hmm. the kids and and whoever's helping, uh, with the kids. Um, so for example, like when I, when my oldest, she's now eight, when she was a little bit younger, when she was about five or six, um, when I was first starting the business, she would just walk into my office unannounced when I'm in the middle of a coaching (laughs) session. So I was like, dude, you can't be doing this. Right. Mm -hmm. So I started locking the door. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yep. It's it's (laughs) such a simple thing. (laughs) Yep. Yep. So now no one can get in. Only I can get out Mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then she started knocking on the door Uh and I was like, listen, you can knock on the door, but only if it is like a emergency and mm-hmm. I said, do you know what an emergency is? And she says, I think so. And I'm like, well, I'm going to tell you what an emergency is mm-hmm. and what an emergency is not. Right. So I had is to like sit blood? down and what's that? <laughs> is there blood? <laughs> if there's right. blood, it's an emergency. If not, right. it can Right. <laughs> exactly. So I, uh, I, I had that sit down with her. And ever since then, she has done really good. I think that there's only like one or two times earlier in the process to where I had to like reinforce that. Mm-hmm. But ever since then, it's been zero interruptions from her. Um, she even knows like, uh, especially now that my son is born, um, she knows that when I'm in the office to not allow my son to be around my office door Mm -hmm. because he'll just make noise and scream and, you know, laugh and all this kind of stuff. And it's super distracting. So she knows that, you know, while I'm working to keep him on the other side of the house and to play with him on the other side of the house, um, and, you know, the babysitters know that too. My wife knows that too. Mm-hmm. So really over the last year or so, I really haven't had very many issues at all, except for that one, but that was a clear emergency. Absolutely. You know? yeah. uh, but that was in place because I had that communication. I had those boundaries and I reinforced those with whoever needed it uh, mm-hmm. whenever things came up. Mm-hmm. I actually made, or I printed, I guess, a stop sign. Um, and I mm-hmm. put on there, it was just a giant stop sign. It said, stop. You know, I don't think it said, do not enter. It says, stop. Mom is either recording or helping someone. I think those are the exact words that I use. And then I laminated it and, um, put it as a, like a hanger. And so when I'm in the office, I try to hang that on the door so that they can see that. Um, and then the, on the That's other good. side of it, it says, um, you know, please knock before entering. So that way they know, yes. So the one I'd be using with, obviously the recording or if I'm in sessions and the other one is more for like that creative time that I was referencing. So if I'm trying to write any sort of curriculum or I'm doing client notes or whatever the case may be, I keep the door closed, but I'm actually a little bit more open with, okay, if you need to interrupt me, you may, but you have to knock first. So just kind of giving them those signs so they understand. Are there any other practical ideas that you have for our listeners today? And it's okay if you don't. I really like the, um, the visual aspect of mm-hmm. things, you know, if, if, and because that, that kind of, uh, gives them the opportunity to, you know, speak with you if they, if they need to. Um, I, I like that balance there. I really do. Um, and I think it also like, it also reinforces them just being able to make wise choices as mm-hmm. well. Mm -hmm. To where like, you know, the way that I've been doing it, it's like, hey, if you see this door shut, don't even think about it kind of thing. (laughs) To whereas when you, the way you're doing it is, hey, if this door shut, there's two options. It'll be on the door and it's Mm -hmm. up to you to take responsibility for that. And I think that that's actually a really good way to reinforce that wise decision making, um, even in just a small way. Yeah, I agree. I will say I'm going to make this tweak though. 
I printed one on one side and one on the other side and just laminate it and then hung it and chose which side to hang it on. I actually think I'm going to go and redo this so that I have two separate ones because I can't tell you how many times it gets flipped in the <laughs> in the interim. And my 10 year old, even though she's 10, she's a very literal thinker. And if that thing is flipped, she'll be like, it was flipped. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so, so she will, if it's supposed to be stopped, she will still knock. And so, you know, I, I'm just trying to work with what I've got at this point, <laughs> mm -hmm. but I'm glad that you like that idea. And, um, I hope that anybody who's listening today, if you've got other ideas, feel free to let us know because we are, as you hear, uh, we are definitely dealing with our own children and our own boundaries and um, how that affects our business and how it affects our clients. And so we'd love to hear any of those as well from you. If you've got those ideas or just want to give us any feedback, please do that inside of our free Facebook group. There has been so much amazing interaction in there. There are some real questions being asked which means there's some real questions being answered as well in there. So mm -hmm. um, the name of that is the New Money Habits Financial Coaches Facebook group, correct? <laughs> it's New such Money a Habits mouthful Financial for me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we do invite you to come in there because, like I said, there's some really great camaraderie going on in there. And it's fun to have the DMs on the side and the private messages and like, hey, did this make sense to you? Yep, sure did. And uh, so anyway, I invite you each to do that today. Yep, definitely don't miss out on that. And also, too, if you uh, if you enjoyed listening to the show today. Um, we do this for free. So one of the biggest things that helps us is if you were to either leave a rating or a review or even better yet, share the show with another coach that you know. Um, it's one of the best ways to help us reach more people and then make a bigger impact uh, through those coaches as well. So we really appreciate that too. And um, that's really the fee of our show, you know? So there's no ads on here telling you to go buy this or go buy that this is basically the fee so pay the fee all right <laughs> we look forward to it, you guys <laughs> thanks so much for tuning in we will see you next time <laughs> bye bye thank you for listening to the financial coaches podcast brought to you by new money habits and size more financial coaching Submit your questions to our hosts by emailing podcast at newmoneyhabits.com. Be sure to subscribe to be notified of future episodes and join our growing group of like-minded coaches on Facebook. And until next time, happy coaching. Music provided by Summer School.